All right, so today's video is gonna be on progressive overload and whether it happens by force or whether it happens automatically. So I'm gonna give my thoughts on how this stuff works with my experience and let's get right into it. So does progressive overload happen automatically? I think that's something that we've all asked ourselves or have been wondering. And in general, the consensus answer from what I can tell through talking to people and seeing what people talk about online there's a gigantic emphasis on forcing progressive overload to happen. It is like the most talked about thing. And while it's important, I think we're viewing it incorrectly. And I'm going to give my thoughts on why and a solution for you guys on how to view it properly and utilize progressive overload in a proper, sustainable way for long-term results. So does progressive overload happen automatically? The short answer is it depends because there are multiple ways to progressively overload. The two main ways, in my opinion, that are best for long-term sustainability are going to be increasing weight and in increasing reps. So when you're increasing weight, you're generally just going to be increasing your tonnage, which is really good for muscle growth. When you're increasing reps, it's a sign that you're getting really good at that specific lift and you're getting stronger and you can just have better endurance and your muscle is stronger. So you add reps until you need to add the weight. So it's kind of like a loop and they both go together to a degree. So there are definitely other ways to progressively overload, which we're not going to get into today. But for the sake of my video, I'm going to stick to these two because I do think that they're the most practical and the most sustainable. Obviously, you can uh, overload with like rep speed or uh, decreasing your RPE or whatnot. But those are um, just a little bit obscure. Not that they're not useful, but they're a little bit obscure and not going to be in general the primary ways to overload for hypertrophy. So the first one I want to start with is reps. So progressive overload by adding reps to your training, this does happen automatically. You can't force it. So as long as you're training with a non-static rep range, this will happen automatically. So to, an example that I want to get into here is going to be uh, just a static rep range, like a three by 10 versus utilizing something of more of like a RIR. So reps in reserve uh, approach with like say an evolving rep range from natural hypertrophy or um, rep goal system from Steve Shaw, which is the way I actually train. So if I'm utilizing a system where I don't pre-select the amount of reps I'm going to do each set, it's up to me to judge when I hit that number on the reps in reserve to stop that set. If I got stronger week over week, let's say I'm doing a barbell curl with 100 pounds and I got 10 reps with one rep in the tank and that's the way I train. I just do one rep in the tank. Then the next time if I got stronger, uh, when I'm or not necessarily that next session, but eventually whether it's the next session, the session after that or the next week or whatever, I will be hitting 11, but also with one rep in reserve. So as long as I stick to my fundamental of that set of leaving one rep in reserve, I will automatically do more reps that set. So Yes, this does happen automatically. You can't force it. You can't milk out another rep unless you cheat on your form or, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what you'd have to do. So this does happen automatically. I don't really hear people talk about this. So that's why I want to emphasize that point here. The next example that I brought up today is going to be weight progression. So this is going to be the second example of progressive overload that we go over today. This is when the main focus of your training is to get stronger and add weight when you can. This will not happen automatically, but it is very, very simple. Once you reach a certain number of reps, which is how I suggest you train, you just need to add weight. It's not that hard. The weight isn't going to just automatically appear on the bar, obviously, but all you have to do is just understand when to add weight and put the weight on the bar. That is all you have to do. Very, very simple. It's way overemphasized and way overcomplicated on YouTube fitness and the fitness industry in general. And I'll go into what we should shift the emphasis into a little bit later here. I believe there is too much of an emphasis on just getting stronger. Uh, wait till next week when I debunk that with Stan Strength, because that is an extremely oversimplified way of viewing lifting that is actually detrimental to your progress and sustainability, in my opinion. When it comes to adding weight, my philosophy is also simple, but I believe it is better because it allows you to focus on what you need to actually focus on. So 
this is what I'm going to get into when, when I say, and I make these claims that we have too much of a focus on progressive overload when in general, it kind of does happen automatically. This is what we're going to focus on here. You need to add weight when necessary, not when possible. So the emphasis that a lot of us get into when we're first starting training or that we hear people tell us like all these big YouTubers will say, Oh, just add weight whenever possible. Just keep getting stronger progressive overload oh my god like that's all that matters it's just not true and while it's important this stuff is so much simpler than we think like how many people are just doing the exact same sets reps and weight every single time like anyone training for muscle growth 99 percent of those people are going to be overloading too hard versus not hard enough if that makes sense so this is just the I think we have this backwards. So to repeat my point here, you need to add weight when necessary, not when possible. There's a very big difference between the two. If you're training properly for hypertrophy, you can always add weight. You can. I mean, I did it and I didn't get any results from it because I was sacrificing other areas of my training. When I kept adding weight, when I wasn't supposed to, and when I like couldn't do it properly, I would sacrifice other areas of my training. So I'd sacrifice my technique, I'd sacrifice the RIR I was using. There's all these little things that start to add up. And eventually, before you know it, you start to train a little bit more like a power lifter, and you focus way too much on the number. And I know, I've talked about this before, when it's when it comes down to like the real versus artificial progression video, which I probably put out two months ago or something at this point. But when you need to add weight, that's when you should do it. So if you're training, and you're rep let's say you're using the rep goal system if you're hitting 45 total reps throughout three sets of a barbell curl and you get 47 it is necessary for you to add weight because now you're getting into a little bit too light of a rep range it's a little bit too much of a low intensity so that is necessary to add weight but let's say i could technically add weight but i'm sacrificing a little uh little momentum and i'm starting to cut the range of motion a little bit and slow down or not slow down and speed up the eccentrics a little bit like yeah it's possible for me to add weight but that's called powerlifting. we're talking about bodybuilding here we're talking about hypertrophy training adding reps and adding weight are the two most fundamental practical ways to progressively overload and they are so incredibly simple to utilize that there's not really a point in putting such an emphasis on them what we should be focusing on is understanding when to overload and adding reps like all you have to all you have to know is when to stop adding reps and just add weight instead once you get to a certain point like i couldn't just do that 100 pound barbell curl until i was getting like 50 reps every set because now the intensity is just way too low for hypertrophy it would make much more sense for me to say okay well once i get to 45 or 50 reps across three sets Let's increase the weight by 10% and maybe get 20 or 30 reps and keep going from there. So as long as you understand when to overload, that makes a lot more sense or it makes a lot. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense to focus on that than it does to just add weight when possible. Oh, I, oh, I didn't get stronger from lift to lift. Like oh, I should probably try and squeeze out five pounds. And that's when you start to sacrifice progress and you're just driving yourself down and down until you eventually have to reset everything. And it's all been a waste of time not trying to fear monger at all. It's not like you're not going to get any results training more like a power lifter, but it isn't optimal. And I'm trying to save you because I've gone through that before. To, let's see, to summarize what we've covered so far, overloading and reps does happen automatically when you're training properly and adding weight will happen as long as you know when to add it. The only way these forms of progressive overload don't happen is if your training fundamentals are not in check or if you forget to add weight to the bar. And I know I'm, it's kind of sarcastic, that second part. In reality, progressive overload comes down to how well you execute your fundamentals. Pay attention to this stuff. Pay attention to what I'm saying right now. This is important. Understanding proximity to failure, technique, exercise selection, and volume will allow you to overload. If you don't understand how these fundamentals work, and you haven't experimented on yourself, you will not be able to overload properly. 
if you're focusing on progressive overload and you don't even know how to execute a lift or what lift to pick in the first place, you're five steps ahead of where you need to be. When you focus on these fundamentals and you have everything in check that needs to be in check, there's literally no way you won't be able to progressively overload as long as there's no weird outside factor like an injury or bad sleep or bad diet or whatever, but that's very easy to control and very rare. So think about that for a second. This is very important. This is a very big piece of my training philosophy. At the end of the day, progress does progressive overload happen automatically? I'd argue yes, for the most part. There's no point in focusing on overload when you don't even understand the fundamentals. It's like trying to beg your boss for more money when you don't even understand how your pay works in the first place. The practical advice for you guys to take away from this video, I do want to leave you with something. I don't just want to like get my point and have you not understand it. If you're going to take away anything from this video, progressive overload is important, but focusing on it as much as you've been told, as much as we've all been told by 99.9% .9 of people on YouTube, it is counterproductive. What you should do is shift your focus to the fundamentals that I mentioned earlier and the overload will come. So focus on those four fundamentals, get those down. If you're doing everything right in your training, you will overload. If the overload isn't happening, you're doing something wrong. So analyze your training, make sure you really understand technique, exercise selection, change a couple things around, you'll have to experiment. If you start to force things, you're just driving yourself into a wall and you'll eventually burn yourself out and you will have to kind of restart like I talked about earlier. I'm gonna leave it at that today. Not gonna to make it too confusing or too long. Um, this is definitely an important video, so I hope you watched through that whole thing. If you did, I do think you'll at least learn one or two things from this. If you have any questions, uh, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk about this stuff, and I, I think I understand it pretty well, so I'd be happy to talk to anybody about this stuff. So thanks for watching.